What you guys got another video on how to set up Plex Media Server on a NAS with Docker. Now we've got the Ugreen NAS right here. And as you can see inside the applications area, there is no Plex available on the Ugreen NAS. But it doesn't mean you can't install Plex. You just have to install it via Docker and it will work perfectly fine. It's a little bit more involved, but I'll show you step by step on how you can get Plex Media Server up and running on a Ugreen NAS or any other NAS using Docker. So let's go to the applications and install Docker right here. Choose our volume that we want to install it on. In my case, it's volume one, and I'm gonna click on install. This will go ahead and download Docker and install it onto our NAS. It's gonna take a bit of time, so be patient and let it do its thing. And once it's completed, once that's installed, we can head over to the installed section on the App Center and you should see Docker there and it should say open. So what we're going to do is open up Docker and configure it ready for Plex. So let's go ahead and click on the icon on the desktop here. We can agree to the terms and conditions, click confirm, and it should look something like this. From here, we need to navigate down to where it says image. And from here, we need to navigate up to the top where it says image database. From there, we can do a search for Plex. So just do a search in the box on the top right hand side and search for Plex. Now there'll be a, quite a few different Plexes coming up right here. So choose which one suits you. I'm gonna go for the most popular one here, which is normally at the very top of the page. So let's navigate back up to the top of the search and see Linux server forward slash Plex. This is the one that people are installed in. If we click on this, it'll open up a website and this will give you all of the information on how to configure and set up your Plex inside Docker. Now we'll go through this a little bit more in detail later on during the video. So let's go back and what we're gonna do is head over to the download section, which is the arrow here pointing down. And now we can use what version number we want, which is the very latest version. So let me select this version right here. Yours might be different at the time of watching this video. Click confirm and this will download the image onto our NAS. So let's go ahead and let that download and install onto the system. You should see right next to the local images, there's a little arrow going down like so. That means it's downloading and installing onto our NAS itself. So we're gonna configure now some folders for our Plex to work properly on our Docker. So what we're gonna do is let that finish downloading, which it's done right now. We'll close Docker off, and then we're gonna head over to the file section and create some folders in here so we can configure our Plex server. So back at the desktop of our NAS, what we're gonna do here is click on files and go to shared folders. So from here, we're gonna to need to create some folders for our Plex server. So click on the plus and create a new shared folder. We're gonna call this Plex and we're gonna choose our location, which is volume one. Leave these as is right now for admin only and we're gonna click confirm. Now we can uh, give it some permissions. Obviously, you're going to want to give this read write access so we can read write it to that folder. And we should be able to do that because we're the administrator of this network attack storage. So we're going to click OK here. Now, inside our Plex folder or directory, what we're going to do is create some more folders. And these are for our Plex to function properly. So let's go ahead and create a bunch of different folders. So create a new folder inside here. And we'll use these folders a little bit later on during the configuration of Plex. So whatever you want to choose here, create a new shared folder or a new folder. You can choose which one you want. I'm going to go for new folder and we're going to name these folders loads of different names. For instance, we're going to need movies folder, a music folder and whatever it is that you want to create on your NAS. So let's go ahead and do movies right here. And I've created a bunch of other ones. So let me create some more here. And you'll see that we've got movies, pictures, transcode, TV shows, data. These are important. You're going to need all of these for it to function properly. So go ahead and create all of what you see on the screen right now. If you don't need music and stuff like that, you don't need to. But just make sure that you've got config, data, and transcode. And then you can create what other ones you want for your media. Now we've got all these done, I'm just gonna create one more here and we should be pretty much good to go. These are the folders that you're gonna to need to configure your Plex and make sure it's all working properly. Now, like I said, you don't need to put pictures or photos if you don't wanna put photos onto your NAS, but I do. 
So what I'm going to do now is just upload one file just to show you, and I'm going to put that into my movie section. This is one of my YouTube videos. So let me just go ahead and keep this and upload it to my server. It's pretty straightforward. Just get your media and copy it to the right folders that you want to share across your network. So let me go ahead and do that right here. And we'll just use one for this uh, video because it will save a lot of time. Now we've got that on there. We're going to go ahead and configure our Plex inside Docker. So let's go back into Docker now. Double click on it. I'm going to go to image. And now we need to go to local images. Once we're inside here, we need to create our container for Plex. So let's go ahead and click the plus sign to create. And now we can see this is our container. From here, they have got a view tutorial right here. But this is going to be the container name. You can name this whatever you like or you can leave it as default. I'm just going to leave it as default, but I'd advise you to give it a name that's more recognizable to you. CPU limit can be whatever you want to set it to. I'm going to leave this as unlimited. Memory limit, again, I'm going to leave this unlimited. Auto restart, I definitely want to do that. So let me go ahead and turn that rocker switch on. Again, graphics card performance. This has got a processor, not a graphics card, so I'm going to leave that as is. And this is where we can now configure all of the environment variables. So this section right here is what you're going to need to configure to suit your needs. Now, like I said before, this is a much more complex way of doing things because we don't have the installer inside the app center. So we're going to need to know a lot of this stuff to be able to configure it properly. But don't worry, because that website that I showed you earlier will have all of this information on there. We're going to come back to that a little bit later on. We're just going to go down to storage pool here and get all of our storage pool set up first. So click the plus sign here. And what we need to do is put forward slash data. These are the folders that we created earlier. You need to set these to read and write. And what we're going to do here is go forward slash. And these are going to be all of the names of the folders. For instance, movies, TV shows, and all of the other ones that you've created for your Plex server. So don't forget, we do need to add in the config data and transcode and stuff like that. If you don't put the forward slash in, you'll get this error code like this. So make sure you put the forward slash in there. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I'm going to give it read write access. And we're just going to go through here and add all of these ones in that we created earlier. So let me just do these last couple. This next one's going to be music. So let me go ahead and do forward slash music. And that's now done. And we can give these read write access like so. Now, we've pretty much got all of these now. I think I just need to do transcode. So let me go ahead and add transcode in here. And there we go. So now that's now done. And give that read write access as well. So once you've got all of these done right here, we need to do the NAS directory file path for these files. So let's go ahead and click that and now navigate to each of these for all of the ones that we've just created. So data. We're going to go back into here. We're going to go into Plex and we're going to click data, click confirm and movies and so on and so on. So just go through here and select all of your folders and directories that you've just set up previously. And once we've done all of these, we should be pretty much good to go from here. So I'm going to go ahead and select these. I just forgot which one I just clicked on there. So let me go ahead and select this one here. And again, we're going to do another one here and click confirm. We've got two more to do, and we've got one more here called Transcode. So let's go ahead and select Plex and do Transcode. There we go. Click Confirm. And now we've got all of our folders connected to our container via Docker. So this should all be working correctly. Now we need to set up our network configuration. Depending on how you want to set yours up, I'm just going to be using Host here, and we're going to select this one right here. And once we select this, we should be pretty much good to go. And again, depending on how you want to set yours up, I'm going to leave that as host. And here we've got a couple of extra options available here. I'm going to leave these alone for now because this is under the other section. We don't need to worry about that too much, but we will need to set up some variables here. And I'll show you how we can set some of those up in this video as well. So there's a couple of key ones that you need to make sure are correct. And again, you can go through these. It explains all of this on that website. And this is the PUID 
and you can see that's set to 1000 by default and we also have the PG ID which is set to 10. Now sometimes these are correct and you don't need to tamper with them but I'm going to show you how we can quickly uh, you know SSH into our NAS and get this configured properly but if you look on that website it tells you all the information right here on what you'll need to do to configure this correctly if some of these settings are wrong for you. So I'm just going to quickly do the uh, PGID and also the PUID. So just work your way through this tutorial here just in case you need to change some of these settings. But I'll show you the ones that I will probably check to see whether it's working. Now I can see here Plex Media Server uh, user is set to ABC. You might want to change that to something a bit more usable for yourself. And again, you can work your way through this. So let me go ahead to control panel and go into terminal and enable SSH temporarily so we can quickly SSH into our NAS and check. And this is also a good way if you want to SSH into it quickly on your Windows PC, you can open up a terminal window and quickly connect to it and do what you need to do there. And once you're finished with it, you can disable the SSH for security reasons. So let me go ahead and now what we're going to do is quickly check. Now, because I've got this window open on my Windows computer, I'm going to quickly open up a terminal window on Windows 11 and I'm going to SSH into my network attached storage device just to check those settings there. And I'll show you how easy it is. So right click on the start button and open up a terminal with admin privileges. This will open up this little box right here. And on the tutorial page, it will tell you exactly how you can SSH into your network attached storage all you need to do here is type ssh space the user name of your network attached storage right here and then at and then the ip address of your network attached storage it's that simple and then once you've done this we can push enter and once we push enter it's going to ask us for our password so let me just say yes here for this one right here this is for the fingerprint and that's fine and from here it's going to say uh, it's permanently added to 192.168.1.152. And from here, it's going to ask us for our password. You won't see it come up on the screen, but it just means that you are going to be connecting via uh, the terminal. So there we are. We're already connected to our network attached storage. Now to get the ID numbers, all you need to do here is type out this command, which also is explained on that website. So just type out your ID, just type ID space and your username and then press enter. And the ones we're interested in is this here, UID equals 1000 and GID equals 10. And these are the ones that I've highlighted right here. These are what need to be inside of your uh, Docker container. So let's go back here and I'll show you where to check. So inside the variables here, you can see uh, we can take a look and this is the environment variable that we need to check. So PUID is 1000, which is already correct, and the PGID, which is 10, and that's already correct. So we don't have to worry about these right here because they are correct. So basically from here, we are pretty much good to go and we can now start to build our Plex server. So what I'm going to do here next is confirm these settings because these settings are correct for me. Now I'm going to confirm these settings and check. And if there's something wrong, we can always come back in here and edit these settings a little bit later on and make changes if we need to. So let me confirm this and we're going to run the container after creation. So we're going to confirm and you should see it's now processing on the screen. And now the server is now running exactly as you can see right here. We've got the name of the server, it's running, and it seems to be working. So we can check some of this and to see. But if you did want to re-edit or re-change some of the settings, if it's not working, you can come back in and click these three dots right here where it says more. Then click edit, and this will then open you up to this location again, and you can make more changes here after you've followed. So if you want to change the a server username from ABC to something more usable for yourself, you can do. I'm going to leave it as is for now because I want to test it to see where we get Plex up and running and working. 
and all of these settings are listed right here. Mine seem to be working straight out the box, but it will explain how you can set up the Plex underscore claim if you have an account with them, and it explains all of that right there, and you can configure it inside that location. We've just been through most of this, so now what we're going to do is open up a browser, and we're going to go to this location right here, and this will take us to our Plex server. We can tell that we're connected to the right one because it's 192.168.1.152, which is the IP address to the Plex server uh, that we've set up on our NAS. Now, if you already have an account with them, you can sign in right here, or you can just create a new account, and basically you can use your email address like this. And all you need to do is put in your email address or username and password and set it up like it explains on the screen. Once you've done this, you can create an account by clicking on the yellow button and saying create account. And once you've done that, you should see something looking like this. This is our Plex server. All you need to do now is say got it and you can now configure your Plex. This is talking about the Plex pass. If you need one, you can buy one or you can use the free option, which is what I'm setting up here. This is our network attached storage number and name. Right here, we can change this to something more recognizable like MyPlex or whatever it is you want to call it. Allow me to access my media from outside my home. If you want to connect to your Plex from outside your home, then leave that check marked. I'm going to uncheck it because I'm just using it locally on the local network. Once we've got this done, we can click Next and then we can start connecting to our media library, which we have on our network attached storage. And this is it right here. Click Add Library. Let's go ahead and click Films, and we can go here and click Next. And from here, we're going to go Next and then browse to our media folder. These are the folders on our network attached storage that we configured earlier, and you can see they are on the left-hand side. I'm just going to click on the Movies one right here, click Add, and click Add to Library. You can go through and follow that same process for all of the other directories that you created on your network attached storage. From here, I'm just going to skip this and leave it as one just to show you. And we're going to click done. And now we can click finish setup. And you should see that video that I added on there earlier, which is what you guys the one were taking that a look at on the my YouTube channel. Storage and there you go. From Ugreen. But these will this obviously is... be all of your media that you've uploaded to your network attached storage. So everything seems to be working correctly. If you're still having issues, you can always go back in and configure your Plex settings inside your container. You can always go back into Docker and change these settings to make sure they're working. You can add more folders and directories inside here if you want to, and add these into your Plex. If you want to add more stuff, you can just do it after the fact. It works perfectly fine, as you can see right there. So that's basically how you can set up a Plex media server on your NAS if you don't have the Plex Media server on your App Center, like you don't have it on the Ugreen one right here, you're going to have to use the Docker container to be able to set up Plex. Now, what you can do also is set up another user account rather than using your administrator account. You can use a guest account and give them access to it and use it that way for a bit more security if you want to. I've not added that in this video, but if you needed to do that, you can do. It's pretty straightforward. You should never really be using the administrator can anyway, and I've covered that in previous videos. If you want to see a security video on how to secure your NAS, let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. A big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server. The link is in the video description. I'll see you over there. It's free to join, and I'll still see you in the next video. Bye for now.